Accuracy, Precision, and Experimental Errors, a mini-lecture based with permission upon Mr. Smith's introductory measurements lecture. Accuracy and precision are not the same thing. They are measured differently and calculated differently, though they are commonly confused and interchanged. In an effort to help you learn the difference, this video has been created. Before we discuss accuracy and precision, however, we need to discuss why we even care. We care because we base many aspects of our life on experimental results, such as, should I take Sudafed or an antibiotic when I have a cold? Ever step on an airplane? Airplane know-how was developed through lots and lots of experiments. Experimental error itself is measured by its accuracy and precision. It is impossible to make an exact measurement. No physical quantity can be measured with perfect certainty. We're going to discuss more on that. Therefore, all experimental results are wrong. Just how wrong they are depends on the kinds of errors that were made in the experiment. We're using the word wrong to emphasize a point. All experimental data is imperfect. Carpenters know their measurements always contain errors. Scientists know their measurements always contain errors also. However, one of the goals is to minimize errors and to be aware of what the errors may be. Devices that we use to measure our objects with have a limit. This is one cause of the error. This is why we cannot measure a physical quantity with perfect certainty. Devices that we use to measure our objects with have a limit. Look at this ruler. It measures to the millimeter. Are the rulers with greater accuracy? Yes but they are very expensive and those too have a limit. You have to accept that all measuring devices have limits. Experimental error then is defined as this difference between a measurement and the true value or between two measured values. We may never know the true value. Experimental errors are measured by accuracy and precision. Significant digits or significant figures is one way of keeping track of how much error there is in a measurement. As a science student, you too must be careful to, and learn how good your results are and to report them in a way that indicates your confidence in your answers. If you do not recall significant figures, please review this video on significant figures and be sure to take notes if necessary. Accuracy measures how close a measured value is to the true value or accepted value. Is the speedometer on my car correct or are those flashing lights for me? No. Since a true or accepted value for a physical quantity may be unknown, it is sometimes not possible to determine the accuracy of a measurement. If we have large differences between the measurement and its accepted value, is that considered high accuracy or low accuracy? low accuracy. What are small differences between a measurement and its accepted value? Is that high accuracy or low accuracy? You can see it demonstrated over to the right there that the high accuracy is where it's closer to the measurement and its accepted values. Accuracy, yes, is related to error. If accuracy is low, we say error is high. If accuracy is high, we say the error is low. Precision measures how closely two or more measurements agree with each other. If a group of measurements are close to one another, we say the group is precise, as shown by the darts. Those darts can be considered measurements. Were they close to each other or are they scattered all over the place? A measure which is highly producible tends to give values which are very close to each other. It would be as if we only threw one dart at the dartboard. One dart is not enough to show how close the measurements are, is it? Think about it. If you have one dart, can you tell if it's close to the other measurement? There is no other measurement, so no, you can't. Accuracy is whether it's close to the accepted value. Precision is whether it's close to your previously measured value. Sometimes we refer to precision as repeatability or reproducibility. If we measure the mass of a nickel on a balance and got 5.0 grams every time, we'd say the measurement is repeatable. 
precision does not in any way measure how close the series of measurements are to the generally accepted value. What is that? Accuracy! Looking at the dartboard, you can see how the measurements on the left are not close to each other. This is low precision. The measurements on the right have high precision, but would you call them good measurements? Probably not, because they are not accurate. The person viewing your results does not have your knowledge of the measuring device. So how do you tell the reader the limits of your measuring device? How do you tell your reader the smallest unit which you were able to measure? Well, this is where significant figures come in. We use significant figures to help each other. The last digit in any significant figure is assumed to be the one that was estimated. The, the precision of a measurement, then, can be estimated by the number of significant digits with which the measurement is reported. It is up to you, the experimenter reporting the results, to ensure that you use the correct number of significant figures so that your readers know how precise your measurements are. For example, a measurement of length using a meter stick with a 1 millimeter graduations will be reported with a precision of plus or minus 0 0.1 millimeters. Whereas a measurement of volume using a graduated cylinder with a 1 milliliter graduation will be reported to, with a precision of plus or minus 0 0.1 milliliters. You need to combine both accuracy and precision to have good measurements. Look closely at this chart. Notice how you need both to have the good measurements. If you need more time to examine this, please pause. When scientists refer to experimental errors, they are not referring to what are commonly called mistakes, blunders, or miscalculations. Sometimes referred to as illegitimate human or personal errors, these types of errors do not belong in the science room. These types of errors can result from measuring a width when length should have been measured or misreading the scale of an instrument. If these happen, don't report the error, rather redo it. Experimental errors, on the other hand, are inherent, meaning they're part of the measurement process and cannot be eliminated simply by repeating the experiment no matter how carefully. There are two types of experimental errors, systematic errors and random errors. A device that's broken may always report the same degree of error in the same direction. This is called systematic error. If the device is incapable of reporting the same value, we say it has lots of random error. So more in systematic error. A systematic errors are caused by the way we did the experiment. Unlike random errors, these errors are always in the same direction, meaning we're over-reading it all the time or we're under-reading it all the time. A miscalibrated balance will always give results that are either too high or too low, depending on the direction of the miscalibration. Evaporation of alcohol always causes a mass that is lower than it should be. Theoretically, we could get rid of these systematic errors by calibrating the balance properly or using a cover to prevent evaporation. Unfortunately, you may not even know that the error exists to correct it. Consider a bathroom scale. If you know that you weigh 168 pounds at the doctor's office, for example, but your home scale always says that 171, the scale has a systematic error. It's always reading the wrong way every time. Random error is different. Random error, if the device is incapable of reporting the same value, we say it has lots of random errors. Random errors are unpredictable. They are chance variations in the measurements over which you, as an experimenter, have little or no control. There is just as great a chance that the measurement is too big as that it is too small. Since the errors are equally likely to be high as low, averaging a sufficiently large number of results will, in principle, reduce the effort. And this is why in science you often take more than one measurement and then you average them. Consider the same bathroom scale. If you get on one time and it says 168, another time it says 175, and another time it says 166, the scale has random error. Important! You can minimize random error, but not systematic error, by taking lots of measurements and averaging the result. I hope you've enjoyed this mini lesson on measurement errors, both random and systematic, and accuracy and precision. 
Please rewind and review as often as it takes to completely understand this important scientific information. A big shout out, a big thank you to Mr. Smith who graciously made his valuable slides available to me to present to you.